Monday, May 20th, 2013, 2.50 p.m., Central Oklahoma. The residents of Moore, Oklahoma are going about their normal afternoon routines. Severe weather was possible, as stated in the Storm Prediction Center's afternoon forecast, but for the city of Moore, it was not forecasted to be anything too out of the ordinary. After all, this was Oklahoma in the middle of May, prime severe weather season for the region. However, a dangerous combination of ingredients was coming together over the region, capable of producing deadly and destructive severe weather. What would begin to unfold just six minutes later would be one of the most prolific tornadoes ever recorded, and would surely never be forgotten by the residents. This is the story of the 2013 Moore Newcastle Tornado. Moore is a suburb of Oklahoma City, and a large one at that, with a population of over 60,000 people. Of course, the region is not at all unfamiliar with tornadoes, but Moore has an especially violent history with the monsters. Several tornadoes have hit the city over the past century as shown, but two well-known prolific tornadoes had hit Moore up to this point. On May 3, 1999, a powerful F5 tornado struck the cities of Moore and Bridge Creek, killing 36 people directly and injuring almost 600 more. This tornado holds the record for strongest winds measured on radar, as confirmed wind speeds up to 321 miles per hour were observed by a Dow, or Doppler on wheels. This tornado would also cause the issuance of the first ever tornado emergency. Just four years later, on May 8, 2003, another violent tornado would impact the city, leaving behind F3 damage in its wake. Needless to say, Moore had an extensive and violent tornado history. As far as the 20th, the setup appeared to be very conducive to significant severe weather. To get an idea of what the environment looked like, Take a look at this proximity sounding taken at 3 o'clock p.m. in Moore on the 20th. Taking a look at the skew T, both moisture and temperature values were in the mid to upper 70s, sufficient for severe storms. Cape values were also incredibly high, with over 5,000 joules per kilogram of cape and an impressive 278 3 cape present. The extremely moist and unstable environment would definitely favor severe thunderstorms, but what about wind shear? Taking a look at this photograph, the shear profiles appear favorable for tornadoes, with some being significant, with nearly 300 meters squared per second squared of low-level storm relative helicity, or SRH. Any supercell that remained discrete in the environment would have the opportunity to produce a long-lived, intense tornado. The SPC, or Storm Prediction Center, issued a level 2 out of 3 moderate risk for the region. However, the main threat that was anticipated with this risk was large, destructive hail. A tornado watch was issued at 1.10 p.m., indicating that there was a chance for a couple of tornadoes, but strong EF2 plus tornadoes were unlikely. Shortly after 2 o'clock p.m., thunderstorms began to fire in the open warm sector, remaining discreet or separated from each other. A certain supercell that had fired was developing at a concerningly fast rate as it approached the Oklahoma City area. Then, at 2.56 p.m., as the supercell was moving through McLean County, it dropped one of the most destructive tornadoes in American history. The tornado that would eventually destroy much of Moore touched down in far northwestern McLean County. The tornado was initially very weak, producing only minor EF0 to EF1 damage for the first period of its long life. The KFOR News Channel caught video of the rope tornado dancing through the fields west of Moore. However, as the tornado crossed Oklahoma State Road 37, it began to rapidly intensify, producing more significant damage as it moved northeast. Shortly after crossing the state road, high-end EF4 damage would be observed as a well-constructed home would be swept clean off of its foundation. This damage occurred less than a mile away from the tornado's point of touchdown, which goes to show how incredibly fast this tornado intensified. The KFOR News Channel continued their coverage as their team managed to continuously capture video of the now wedge, rain-wrapped beast of a tornado. The tornado produced more EF4 damage to another home as it was completely demolished before briefly weakening, albeit slightly. 
more homes would receive significant damage as the tornado, now at EF3 intensity, impacted a residential area just west of Moore. From there, the tornado would cross the Canadian River into Cleveland County, and for the next mile of its path, it would cross over primarily rural land, impacting very few structures in the area. At this point, the National Weather Service decided to issue a rare tornado emergency for the city of Moore and the surrounding areas. A tornado emergency is a rare form of tornado warning that is only issued when there is confirmation of a large, life-threatening tornado. The tornado then took an eastward turn, putting downtown Moore in the direct path of the monster. As it began to approach the densely populated downtown area, the tornado rapidly began to re-intensify, producing significant EF4 damage to many homes. Trees in the same area experienced significant debarking, which was another clear indicator of this tornado's sheer power. It was then that Mike Morgan, meteorologist for KFOR, said this. Never want to say it, but we're going to say it right now. This is May 3rd all over again as far as the intensity of this tornado, where it is heading. It Continuing east, the tornado continued intensifying, reaching borderline EF5 status as homes were swept clean off of their foundations north of the Featherstone community. Video of the tornado clearly shows debris being lofted by the monster, with some being tossed hundreds of yards. The tornado then set its eyes on the next major structure, Briarwood Elementary School. Because of the time of day that this tornado occurred, the school day was still in session, and with staff and students inside, the tornado impacted the elementary school, completely decimating the building. As seen in this picture, most of the school was collapsed or heavily damaged. Miraculously, zero fatalities occurred in Briarwood Elementary. Continuing eastward, the tornado, now around three quarters of a mile wide, intensified to EF5 status as virtually every home within a fifth of a mile wide path was flattened and completely destroyed. Tragically, multiple fatalities occurred in these homes. The next target of the beast was yet another elementary school, Plaza Towers Elementary. Similarly to Briarwood, the school was still in session at the time of impact and the school did not have any sort of safe room to take students and staff in case of a tornado, which turned out to be a fatal mistake. With students and staff taking shelter inside, the tornado roared through at EF4 intensity. The school would suffer the same fate as Briarwood, as the school would be entirely destroyed. This is a before and after photo of Plaza Towers, showing the immense destruction the school experienced. Tragically, seven students attending Plaza Towers Elementary would lose their lives, all of whom were second and third graders who lost their lives when the walls of the school collapsed. The tornado continued to produce mass destruction all across Moore, completely demolishing almost every structure that it hit. It was then that the tornado took a northeastern turn before looping back on itself. The homes in the vicinity of the tornado at this site received EF5 damage, as four well-constructed homes along 6th Street were all completely decimated. The Moore Medical Center also took an extremely heavy hit as the building was destroyed. Dozens of vehicles that were at the medical center were also demolished and left sitting in a pile of ruins. The tornado briefly weakened as it crossed Interstate 35, but quickly re-intensified shortly after. Similarly to the rest of the path, the tornado plowed through more residential areas, destroying even more homes and businesses. Severe ground scouring was observed near many of these homes, with shredded pieces of debris being scattered throughout. Terrifying videos from the tornado later came out, with the monster, rain-wrapped wedge tornado being shrouded in rain. More homes would experience the same fate as the tornado moved east, with more EF5 damage being observed in Hunter's Glen Court. Highland East Junior High School would take a hit from the tornado, with their gym sustaining major damage. For the next two miles, the tornado continued shredding and destroying any home it hit, with EF4 to EF5 level damage being observed all throughout this portion of the path. The tornado slowly began to weaken, and finally, after almost 14 miles and 40 minutes of being on the ground, the tornado lifted north of North Cleveland. The end result of this violent tornado was 24 fatalities, over 200 injuries, over $2 billion in damage, 
and the complete destruction of a large portion of the city of Moor. Over 1,100 homes were destroyed in the tornado, with many experiencing EF4 to EF5 level winds. Aerial footage shows a large strip of Moor where all that is visible is destruction. Estimated maximum winds in this tornado were 210 miles per hour, making it one of the strongest tornadoes ever and making it one of 59 F5 or EF5 tornadoes. As of July 2024, this is the last officially rated EF5 tornado to date. It's been over 11 years since this tornado, and the city has been rebuilding ever since. In 2014, the city upgraded its building codes, becoming the first city in Oklahoma to do so. Both Briarwood and Plaza Towers rebuilt and reopened shortly after the tornado, with Plaza Towers incorporating a safe place into the school where in event of a tornado, students and staff could take shelter there. Moore set the example for how all tornado-impacted towns should rebuild, with them never giving up hope and staying strong. Before I end this video, I would like to thank you all for watching. This took a lot of time and work, so I appreciate you watching until the end. If you at all found this enjoyable or informative, please consider subscribing as it will help me out a lot. Also, I have linked down in the description a lot of sources that have a lot of good information on the tornado if you would like to learn more. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later on MedioCube.